Hey, I want to welcome everybody in here at New Orleans as we're wrapping up day two of our Sugar Bowl coverage here with BuckeyeGrove.com. I'm Kevin Noon. This is Griffin Strom, and we had an opportunity to talk today to the Ohio State defense and the Clemson offense. I want to thank our good friends at Steamboat Dry Goods, who are our official travel sponsor for this whole event. Be sure to check them out. You can see the banner below. But, you know, let's get right to it. We had the opportunity to talk to Trevor Lawrence. Dabo Swinney has come out and said it would be a, a darn shame if he doesn't win the Heisman. You look at his numbers, pretty darn good, 11 games through the season. Uh, you know, I think so much of the things kind of flow through him, very similar to Ohio State where everything flows through Justin Fields. But just your impressions on what everybody had to say about, uh, about uh, Lawrence today. Yeah, well, you know, it is uh, obviously Trevor Lawrence's, you know, junior season. Everyone thinks he's going to go to the draft. Everyone thinks he's going to be the number one pick in the draft. Um, I would be shocked if he wasn't, honestly, at this point. And so because you're kind of getting to the end of Trevor Lawrence's career here, you're getting kind of the whole legacy conversation. What is Trevor Lawrence's legacy? Um, you know, he's been such kind of a lightning rod in the sport of college football the last several years. Um, hasn't won that Heisman, so that's kind of a, been a big talking point. I don't know if he'll get it this year. It is kind of a weird year. Um, I think a lot of people um, were behind the Kyle Trask kind of bandwagon for that until they, you know, they end up losing those last two games in a row. That kind of takes right. the steam out of that. Um, but what I think is really interesting is um, just the dynamic with Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence. You know, um, the top two, uh, you know, recruits in the class of 2018, um, two of the higher ranked, you know, quarterback prospects of all time in terms of the recruiting stuff. Um, and they've got, they've got another chance to, to, to go head to head here, um, you know, for the second time in college football. But, you know, they've, you know, uh, competed against each other in camps and for recruiting status and now for NFL draft status. I just think it's a really it's really cool that we get to see these guys go head to head uh, one more time. A lot of things to revolve around Travis Etienne. He's not only a talented rusher, but he is a very good uh, receiver. Uh, you look at the game last year in 2019, Ohio State held him to less than 40 yards on the ground, but he was dangerous as, as a receiver. Uh, you know, Etienne only from three hours away or so, he's supposed to have 20 people here. So 20 of the 3,000 tickets apparently are going to Travis Etienne's family and friends or whatnot. Um, but, you know, that creates, you know, where, where Ohio State has Justin Fields and Trey Sermon in the running game you have something very similar as these teams seem to be kind of a mirror image of each other, at least from, you know, from a macro level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, Travis Etienne, um, you talk about his, his ability um, to catch the ball, and that's kind of been a big thing. It's obviously been a big thing for the last, you know, few years with this guy. Um, as he's kind of gotten um, praised with all these superlatives, you know, by the Ohio State coaching staff, um, you know, Ryan Day said that uh, Lawrence and Etienne are two of the most dynamic playmakers in the history of college football, is what uh, Ryan Day said. Um, but with Etienne in particular, his his actual his running numbers are a little bit lower this season in terms of his uh, per game average and his yards per carry. I think last year he averaged like seven yards per carry or, or more than that last year. Now it's uh, something a little more uh, reasonable. Um, but you know he's kind of supplanted that um, with uh, or bolstered that I should say with his uh, production in the in the past game. He's got like 500 yards, uh, more than 500 yards receiving. He's got. 800 some yards rushing and um, you know I think a lot of Ohio State fans even though they uh, Ohio State did manage to limit his production in the run game last year um, you know they're still kind of having you know waking nightmares of what Travis Etienne did um, you know on that one play in particular that jump pass from uh, Trevor yeah. Lawrence that he, he took that which ended up being kind of knockout blow um, in the end. Uh, once again, I'm Kevin Noon. This is Griffin Strom. If you're watching our Buckeye Grove day two recap of our Sugar Bowl coverage. Um, you know, on the other side, we had the opportunity to talk to Sean Wade. And Sean Wade, uh, last time he played Clemson, ended very abruptly. Controversial targeting call. Probably interpreted the right way on a poorly written rule. Uh, you know, you have to feel good for a guy like Sean Wade to get another crack at this. You know, ma a major reason why he came back because uh, the way things ended, you know, didn't sit well with him. Yeah, and it's very understandable because that, that play last year, everyone will remember that play as being just the, really the marker of just a massive 180-degree uh, shift in momentum in that game. Um, before that, Ohio State was up 16 to nothing, as everyone will remember. Um, you know, then Sean Wade, it looks like he gets a big sack on third down, um, you know, in that, that cornerback uh, blitz pressure there. Um, but instead, you know, it's called a targeting. Uh, Clemson goes ahead and scores like two plays later or something like that. And um, Sean Wade's, you know, no longer in the game. And uh, he came came out, you know, this year. And and I personally, um, I didn't maybe didn't have the inside scoop on it. I thought I assumed he would probably go um, to the draft last year, but he ends up uh, obviously announcing he's going to return. 
Um, and now you've seen he's a you know an All American, um, the the Big Ten defensive um, defensive back of the year. Um, but yeah, this is just a huge part of his kind of uh, career storyline, the arc of his uh, college uh, you know career, um, because he gets another chance now, and he's going to be playing a slightly different position. That's uh, been a you know a big talking point going into this game in terms of how the Ohio State defense looks a little bit different um, personnel wise um, than it did last year. Um, and and uh, Kerry Combs, you know, the high state defensive coordinator and secondary coach today, he even said that um, he went as far as to kind of say that Sean Wade a little, in a, a little bit kind of felt somewhat responsible for the loss um, to Clemson last year. And so, you know, him coming back, coming in and having a huge game um, would be, you know, a, a, a great story for, for Sean Wade. A couple other guys who quite possibly are playing in their final game, games plural, if Ohio State's able to get through this game, Justin Hilliard as well as Jonathan Cooper. Jonathan Cooper had his season kind of derailed last year due to injuries. They made the decision before the Michigan game that they were going to redshirt him so he could come back. He played in the Michigan game, didn't play in the championship game, in the Big Ten championship game, didn't play in this game. And then you have Justin Hilliard, who's probably been in school long enough to have multiple PhDs, uh, playing the best football of his career. Uh, you know, he, uh, you know, Cincinnati State Xavier product will be going up against uh, a former teammate of his, Matt Bockhorst, offensive lineman for Clemson as well. But, you know, these two guys really getting to put it out there again on the biggest of stage, stages and hoping that this isn't their final game. Yeah, and, you know, there's a joke in there somewhere that Justin Hilliard, uh, you know, maybe he was, he's the only player to have been around for all four, uh, you know, Ohio State Clemson games in the past, including the 1978, <laughs> with as long as he's been around. Um, but it's particularly interesting um, for me with, with Hilliard because, obviously, in the Big Ten Championship, um, Baron Browning uh, was, was not able to go, and there's, kind of, there's still kind of, um, you know, some speculation about whether or not he, he will be able to play. And um, in Browning's absence, you have Justin Hilliard stepping in at the Sam uh, linebacker spot and really having a star performance in the Big Ten Championship game with, uh, you know, a huge interception. He had a, he, he re recovered another, another fumble as well, right? And um, just a monster game from him, um, which, you know, it just, it's always a feel-good story with him because, you know, he, uh, his early career was just so derailed by injury after injury. Um, and he's going to get to perform in a, in a huge spot again, uh, potentially starting um, in place of Baron Browning against Clemson. Um, you know, maybe he didn't have the biggest role, um, you know, last year. And, and, and same with Cooper. Uh, Jonathan Cooper, of course, um, you know, you think maybe he could have finished out last year. Um, maybe that decision haunts him a little bit, thinking, man, what if I did, what if I, uh, you know, didn't redshirt last year? What if I did, you know, play those last couple games? Could I have made the difference in, um, in the Clemson game? Of course, I think um, we all know it's better for, better for him uh, in the long run to, to come back, um, you know, close out this, uh, this chapter of his career, get another, you know, six games, uh, seven, possibly eight games um, to close out his career. And then one more guy I want to talk about. We had the opportunity to talk to Haskell Garrett, who was named second team All-American by the Sporting News today. This is a guy that a scary off the field incident, uh, you know, gets shot in the face. I mean, honestly, could have lost his life, not lost his career, lost his life. Uh, has, you know, lost a couple teeth in the incident, was having to have, be like on a liquid diet for a while. He certainly, you know, if, if a liquid diet does that, you know, sign me up because he is, you know, he's playing some high level football and the Buckeyes are going to need everybody to show up, Haskell Garrett included. Yeah, we got to talk uh, to, to Haskell Garrett and Tommy Togia, who have just been, um, you know, really wrecking shop um, against, uh, you know, Big Ten opponents this year um, in the interior uh, defensive line uh, for Larry Johnson and company. And, um, you know, those are kind of two, two guys that kind of were a bit of a surprise in just how well they were able to uh, stand out, you know, on an Ohio State defense. They weren't guys that you were looking at as, um, you know, big-time award winners, or you, won't, you weren't expecting them to be All-Americans coming into the season. Um, and obviously, Togi, I wasn't, but, you know, he's been basically neck and neck with uh, Haskell Garrett in terms of what he's been able to do this season. Um, and they're going to, uh, you know, have to play a huge role for Ohio State once again. Um, even though Ohio State's been, been so good um, against the run, uh, you can't afford to, to suddenly not be against a, a Clemson team that has Travis um, Etienne. And, of course, um, you know, a big talking point is, you know, Trevor Lawrence, uh, that 67-yard rushing touchdown he, he ripped off against Ohio State last year. How much is his mobility going to factor into this? Um, and so I, I, those are two, two of the guys, along with obviously the linebackers and, and whoever else on the Ohio State defense, that you're looking at to kind of shut that down um, uh, if Ohio State's going to have a chance to win. And just kind of talking about the mobile quarterback, and I know that we talked to offense yesterday on Monday, but let's remember, too, that Justin Fields 
was wearing the big brace when it was the Clemson game. So he should have mobility too. So, you know, you got two quarterbacks that have put up huge numbers in terms of, of throwing the ball. And the X factor really could be the legs of either of them or both of them. We, I mean, we just don't know. I mean, you're going to have to kind of prepare for a little bit of everything. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, these are, you know, two of the most dynamic guys in the entire sport. Um, you know, these teams, you know, match up so well. Um, and I, I really feel like this is just the, the more exciting, uh, you know, matchup in general, the two, like it kind of was last year as well. Um, so it really is kind of a treat that we're, we're getting uh, uh, able to see this matchup ran back just a year later um, with a lot of those same pieces in play, and especially, obviously, at quarterback, um, with this huge matchup between uh, Trevor Lawrence and Jesse Fields. And that pretty much wraps up the day. Um, we're going to get one more opportunity to talk to the head coaches for the traditional, you know, trophy type of call, but it's not necessarily, I mean, with Clemson coming down, I believe on Wednesday, Ohio State's coming down on Thursday. I mean, it is not a traditional bowl week. We're not going to see players out on Bourbon Street. They're not going to have the opportunity to do a lot of these things. We're just going to have to live it up for them on Bourbon Street. So as we wrap this up, we'll be going out on Bourbon Street here in a little bit. So we'll probably be a little, a little blurry-eyed tomorrow. But uh, once again, I want to thank you all for watching. Be sure to thank our sponsor, Steamboat Dry Goods, who's made this all possible. For Griffin Strom, I'm Kevin Noon, and we'll talk to you very soon. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. Come visit us over at BuckeyeGrove.com for all the best Ohio State information on the web.